Hello, my awesome fourth grade artist. Today, we're gonna to be starting a new project I think you're gonna like. We're gonna be painting with watercolors, and we're gonna be doing a water uh, color technique landscape. So, in this landscape, there are one, two, three, four, five different watercolor techniques that we're gonna use. Each section is a different technique, and it's gonna all come together to make this colorful landscape. So the first thing that we're gonna do is make our sun because that will be cut out and glued to this. So let me show you how we're gonna do that. You're gonna each get a piece of this uh, smaller watercolor paper and you're going to use your circle template and a pencil and trace a circle on it, okay? Make sure on the back of this that you write your name because this will have to dry and then you'll cut it out before you glue it onto your landscape. So this technique that we're gonna do is called wet on wet. And your teacher will need to have a container of water. And remember for watercolors, we use soft brushes. So give the students soft brushes. It's called wet on wet because we're gonna first just apply water to the paper and then we're gonna add our watercolors. So for this one, teachers, I have um, magenta, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Let me turn it around where I have my little dots but you could use different colors if you want. Just try to keep some colors that'll be good for landscape. And so we're making a sun, so we're gonna use our warm colors. So the first thing you do is get your brush. You need to have clean water to begin with, and you're going to just paint water on here, trying to stay inside of your circle shape, okay? Try to stay inside, because that's gonna help contain your water colors that you're gonna add. You have to go kind of quickly because the paper will try to dry quickly. So while it's still wet, you're gonna dip into some warm colors. I'm gonna start with some yellow and I'm just kind of going in and making splotches. Then I'm gonna wash my brush, kind of drag it along the sides and then I'm gonna add some magenta. You just drop it. I'm not really painting, I'm just dropping. And as you do that, it's gonna blend in with the other colors. All right, I'm gonna add some red. Now you see you still have a lot of white, so what you can do is go in and get a little water and just kind of touch it in and it'll all kind of blend it together. I think I need some orange to make this look more like a sun. So let me get some orange, oh yeah. It's really pretty to see how it's gonna blend in there and they all do differently um they'll all look different you just kind of it's just kind of let the natural thing happen i'm kind of just going right up to my edges now of my circle you're going to cut this out so if it goes over a little bit it's no big deal if it comes out of your lines it's fine okay so um and you didn't have to use magenta if you wanted you could have just used yellow and orange or you can just use yellow, orange, and red. You just use the warm colors that you want. Remember your name's on it. You're gonna sit it over to the side, somewhere flat to dry until you're ready for it. All right, the next thing is we're going to draw our lines for our landscape to divide them into sections or shapes. So we're gonna make three lines, okay? So you're gonna have your watercolor paper, turn it vertically with the long side going up and down. And we're gonna start with our first line. So find the middle of your page and come up just a little bit. And you're gonna make a soft curving line. So it's not really, really curvy, just a gentle curving line. That's one. And I'll put maybe three or four fingers, maybe four fingers, yours are probably a little smaller than mine. And another curving, gentle curving line, but make it not quite the same as your first one. You don't want them to all be the same. It's like we're kind of making rolling heels, okay? And then we're just going to make one more. So another four fingers. Come over here and just make sure that you're not making them all the same. So you should have three lines. So that gives us one, two, three, four sections. We're going to do four watercolor techniques, okay? All right, so starting again, the next technique we're gonna do is gonna be adding salt to watercolor. And you've probably done this before, it's a lot of fun. So I love this one, it makes a really nice texture. So to start with, this is our sky. So I'm gonna get some blue and I'm just gonna start painting the sky. 
teachers, on those watercolors, you can have them diluted a little bit with water. Don't use just the pure watercolor from the container. Dilute it a little bit so it's not so harsh. It'll soften it up a little bit. And I, what I'm doing to kind of make the color flow better is adding a little water as I go. You don't have to get your, um, do your painting perfectly, students. It'll look nice. You kind of have to go fast also because this salt technique is only going to work while the watercolor is wet. So just try to follow that line you drew. This will try to um, curl up on you. Sometimes I get a pencil and kind of hold it down like that. It's going to try to curl up because it's wet, but it'll flatten out later. Now, if you see any places that have dried, go back and add water. While it's still wet, you're going to sprinkle salt on it and the water will try to run away from the salt and so it creates a really neat texture okay so we have to let that dry then you scrub the salt off so just let it dry and these can all be worked on at th that you don't have to do all this in one time so if it takes you several times you can dry and come back to the next section but i'm gonna go ahead and do all the sections all right, the next section we're gonna do is gonna be using rubbing alcohol so rubbing alcohol is like if you've ever had a cut or something, your grown-up may have used um, alcohol to clean it. So it's, you teachers, you need to put it in a little container and then you're gonna have one of these pipettes to drop it on there. And we've gotta do it while the watercolor is wet again. So I'm gonna scrub my brush out really good. And um, teachers, it'll be good if you continually keep cleaning this water because it will try, mine really should be clean, but I'm not gonna take the time to do that right now. But keep them with clean water as best you can. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with magenta and I'm gonna leave just a little white space where that line is because we're gonna go back with a black Sharpie later and it'll just help keep those colors from blending from the magenta and the blue. But if it blends, it's okay, but that'll just give us, if you, give, if you leave a little white gap there, it will give you a little space to work with. And again, you've got to work kind of quickly, students, because you want your watercolor to not dry up. It, this will only work with wet watercolor. All right, so paint it on there really good. And then you're going to take your pipette and get a little alcohol in it. And you're just going to drop it on there and it creates a really neat texture. Look at that, it looks like little bubbles almost. The, the uh, water color tries to run away from the rubbing alcohol. Well, and I love this one. It's probably my favorite one. Isn't that nice? All right, so then the next one is we're gonna do a resist. So we've prob you've probably done this before in here, but you're gonna take an oil pastel. Oil pastels are made out of a waxy, oily substance, and so it's going to resist, the water is going to resist that. It's going to go away from it. So you're gonna draw a pattern. You can draw whatever pattern you want. Um, for this one, I just made some curvy lines, but you might wanna make straight lines. Keep it pretty simple though. So this time I think I'm gonna make lines that go like this. Don't write anything, just a very simple pattern with lines and you can use whatever color oil pastel you want. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my lime green. And also, students, you don't have to be using the same colors I use. It'll look good if you decide which colors you want. They don't all, they shouldn't all look the same. We want them to look different. And then you just paint right on top of that oil pastel. And the oil pastel comes through, no problem. It's resisting. Feels bumpy as you brush your, put your paintbrush over it. They are two very different materials. So the water doesn't blend the oil pastel. And I dropped a little green in my blue sky, that's okay. Watercolors are kind of unpredictable, but that's what makes them so pretty. You never know how it's gonna turn out. All right, and then the last technique we're gonna do is called uh, blotting. We're gonna be using a sponge and we're going to blot some of the color up. So I've got another color here. I've got some teal. I didn't have room to put it in my little um, jars there. So I'm gonna use this teal color just to bring in a different shade of blue. 
and I'm going to paint it on there. It has, it was already diluted a lot with water, so I don't need to add too much more water. See how light that is? Okay, I'm just painting that on there. Then I'm going to dampen my brush, a uh, sponge in the water, dampen it, and I'm wringing it out really good. And then I'm just going to go in and kind of blot on there, and it'll give you a, a little texture. Oh, let me push that up so you can see what I'm doing. It'll give you some texture, okay? So those are our techniques. So after you've done that, and I think I forgot to say at the beginning, but you do need to make sure your name labels are on here. So after you are finished with that, you will let it dry and then you will come back with your sun that you made. And see, this is one that I had made that's dry. You'll cut it out and then you will dry, uh, glue it onto here. So you probably need to use some Elmer's White Elmer School Glue because this paper is kind of thick. Then teachers, you, uh, it'd probably be good if you put it under some books or like some reams of paper to flatten it out really good. Then the very last step is going to be using our black Sharpie to emphasize the lines. So uh, you see where I've just gone in and drawn over my pencil lines. Uh, it's good if you make your lines kind of thick. So I could go back and thicken this up, this one up a little bit. Try to make your lines really neat. Uh, no jagged edges, make your edges really good and nice. And I think I'll go back and make this one a little bit fatter too. And just having that thick black line will create some contrast. It'll, it'll separate your sections. It just really makes it pop, makes each section pop. So I hope you enjoyed this. I can't wait to see what you do. I hope you learned some good watercolor techniques. And I will see you next time. Bye.